Hey guys, and welcome to your 25th Java tutorial in which we are going to be going over the Java math class. Oh boy, you guys all love math, right? I hope the answer to that was a yes, but anyways, let's get started by first importing the math class. Uh, and the math class is located at java.lang.math. How convenient. Uh, so once we've imported it, uh, this math class has a bunch of methods, and all of these methods are... I'm using a keyword right now that I will explain later on. They are all static. Now, all that means for now is that remember when we had like um, we had a scanner object and we called it s and we set it equal to a new scanner, and only after doing that could we actually use like s dot. I don't know. We used s dot next int. All right, there we go. Right, that was terrible, terrible typing there. But remember that we always had to create a, a instance of the scanner class to do that, to actually access one of these methods? Well, that is not true for a static method. For a static method, we could just type the name of the class, dot operator, and then the method. And um, uh, that is exactly the case with the math class. It has a bunch of static methods that we can use, meaning that we can access them directly through the actual math class and we don't have to create an instance of this math class which is very convenient uh, as you will later see for our purposes uh, so let's get started right away uh, it's gonna be a relatively simple tutorial so I'm just going to create a system.out.println line here so it will print will uh, automatically see everything that we do in our console window because we're gonna print out a line uh, to that uh, so first method I wanted to go over is math.min. Now this takes two values and it can return the minimum of those two values. So let's say we have uh, an integer 3 and an integer 5. Well what's the smallest? Uh, it's 3 so it should print out 3. Look at that. Bam! Bam! 3. Alright and it not only has to be not only can it be an integer it can also be a float or a double. Uh, so we can change this around a bit like so what value shall we get look at that 1.1241 great awesome so this is working fine and uh, as you guys guessed if there's a min there's probably a max and the max once again returns the larger of these two values uh, whereas the min returns a smaller value so if we run this once again we get uh, 3.422345 uh, so everything's once again working great uh, what method after that? Oh yes, also the famous square root method, SQRT. Uh, so the square root of 25 would be, well, 5. Let's just test that. Run run this, hit OK, look at that, 5.0. And if it's not something that easy, square root of 17, for example, you need to find that to make a calculation. Uh, bam, um, a very precise uh, approximation of the square root of 17. Uh, what next? Well, yes, there is also a few rounding methods here. There's a method uh, math.seal, which rounds a number up. So if we have a number 2.3, it'll round it up to 3. Let's just test that. Run this. Bam, what do we get? We get 3.0. And there's also math.floor, floor, which rounds a number down. So if it's, say, 2.7, uh, it'll round it down to 2. Let's see if my prediction is correct, and BAM 2.0. Uh, and there is the fairest rounding of all, which is uh, math.round, uh, kind of dubiously. Uh, so if we put 2.5 here, it'll round it up to 3. If we put 2.4, uh, it'll round it down to 2. So it's uh, pretty much your standard type of rounding. Uh, so once again, we round this 3, 2.7, uh, it'll round uh, to the nearest nearest whole number. Pretty much all it's doing here. I don't know why I'm trying all these cases, just trying to show you guys how it works, I guess. Kind of a pointless thing, but uh, anyways, let's move on. Math.pow. Uh, no, it does not pow you in the face, uh, luckily. But no, it's actually how we use powers in Java. Uh, so the first number is the is your base number, and the next number is your exponent. So uh, pretty much all that means is that we're raising the first number to the power of the second number. So 3 to the power of 5. Well, I happen to know that that's 243. Oh, look at that. Bam. Explosion. We're doing, we're doing great here. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's just try another number that's probably more common. Uh, 
These are all powers of 2. 2 to the power of 5 is 32. And bam, look at that. We get it out on the screen. Uh, so another method, absolute value, or ABS, abs, as it's notated in uh, programming is its notation in programming and all this does is it gives you the absolute value of a number which is I hope most of you know is the distance of a number from zero so it always has to be positive uh, so if it's if it's negative 3.4 that's 3.4 units away from zero so it just prints out 3.4 if it's positive 3.4 uh, same beans uh, it's 3.4 units away from zero so we get 3.4 uh, as a uh, result there uh, and I also wanted to show you guys this math.random method, uh, something very useful as a matter of fact. Uh, what this uh, does is it gives us a random number from 0.0, .0 to 1.0. And let me just show you what it does. Uh, we get like 0 0.9407 something something. If we rerun this program, we'll get 0 0.98 something something. Rerun it, 0 0.31. So it's actually incredibly useful to have such a tool uh, that can give us a random number. Uh, so yeah, definitely keep this method in mind. Uh, we will be using it later a lot. Uh, and let me just show you. Those are pretty much all the methods that I wanted to go over. And there's also some constants. Uh, math.e uh, is the famous constant e, which is approximately equal to 2.71 something else that I forget. But uh, it's it's mostly used in uh, compound interest. Some of you guys may know that. Some of you might not. Look it up if you don't. Uh, very useful number. Well, you don't have to look it up, but you know, I'm just, I'm just kind of you know dic dictating the rules here. Uh, and another number that we will definitely use more uh, in programming is math.pi, uh, when we pretty much perform calculations or operations on circles. Uh, and if we actually run this program, we'll get the closest approximation of pi, 3.14159, and same for e actually. Let's just see the exact value here. 2.71 blah 8 something 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 alright yeah so those are the pretty much the two constants in the math class and I believe that uh, those are all the methods that uh, I wanted to go over in this tutorial so remember guys min max square root rounds and uh, seal and floor go along with that pow uh, abs random and the constants e and pi and uh, there are also a few other methods that are related to trigonometry and we won't really have to use those methods unless we're doing something with physics, uh, doing a physics simulation, or we're doing something that's more related to game programming. Now if, if, if there's a slight chance that we might want to do something with that, I will probably definitely go over a view of trigonometric methods uh, so that you guys will uh, how, kind of understand how we can apply them and use them in programming. Uh, but so far I don't see the need for that but just to show you guys that this math class has them for those of you that know what these methods are they're uh, sine, uh, cosine, and tangent as well as uh, some other trigonometric methods that, uh, that can be useful uh, so I believe that's really all I wanted to go over in this tutorial um, uh, so yeah guys I hope you kind of you kind of got got a good view on the math classes on the the sorry the abilities of the math class in Java and what you can be able to do uh, so thank you very much for watching this tutorial and uh, I'm out peace